Hi, my name is Dr. Philip Rutzlowski from the Advanced Foot and Ankle Center of San Diego, and welcome to The Fix. Today, we are excited to have joining with us Dr. Anna Horonic from Salt Lake City, Utah. Welcome, Doc. Thanks. So, tell us a little bit about yourself and your practice. I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah, and I work with Intermountain there with the residents and the fellows. And what type of patients do you see? I do a lot of non-elective work with limb salvage, diabetic foot care, diabetic foot ulcers. So when your patients come in, you have to sometimes decide people need surgery or not. Who needs surgeries in your, types of pra in your practice? Um, most of my patients that come to me for surgery are non-elective, meaning that we're not uh, necessarily planning things, but we're doing things for more of a limb preservation stake. Tell me a little bit about limb preservation, what that means to you. So in my case, limb preservation is when patients come and they have wounds or aggressive deformity and they've already been told, you need to lose a leg or, or they feel like they, that's their only option. So they come to me and I can give them other options and ways to keep their leg on their body. So why is it that some doctors will tell the patient, you need to lose your leg, but then they come to you and you can save it? What's the magic sauce? <laughs> Probably training and a little bit of crazy. All right. Well, training is the most important thing. The more you know, the more you can do to help someone. Absolutely. So you have patients that have all types of deformities and you have a case to share with us today. Tell us about this patient. Yeah, so this gentleman came to me uh, as a third or fourth opinion um, after he'd been told to lose his leg would be the easiest thing for him. He had a pretty aggressive deformity where he was more or less walking on the bottom part of his ankle with his heel bone to the side of his leg. So when a patient comes in that has a big deformity, and I'm assuming there was no infection at this time. At this time, no. So you have to make some decisions. So the patient comes in, what, what does this deformity do for him walking-wise, functional-wise, and what are our worries if we leave this deformity alone? Absolutely. So it's not very functional to not have your bones in place where they're supposed to be. And so it can be problematic in the sense that it can cause wounds, which can be infection, which can lead to emergent need to lose a leg, and you kind of are out of choices. So in this case, originally we had talked about taking his heel bone and very gradually pulling it back underneath his leg. And what method, how do you use, how do you do that? Yeah, so we use um, external fixation. In this case, we were talking about using the TL hexapod, which is a gradual system that uses struts to kind of, and a computer assisted struts to kind of pull that heel bone underneath the leg. And what ended up happening with this patient? So he went on his honeymoon, he was recently married, and came back and had developed a wound and an infection and ended up in the ER and needing more urgent care in the ER from one of my colleagues who then drained the abscess or the infection and then called me so that I could kind of bring him into the staged process of trying to get his leg back underneath his body. You know, I, I like this story and particularly to highlight the one thing that you're just saying is that you know, we tell our patients that you may need surgery, you may need surgery, and then here's a patient that you, you had a good plan, and they go away and it gets infected, and now that surgery goes out the window. So why couldn't you do that original surgery, and what did you end up switching over to? So uh, because of the infection, we had to take out more bone than we had originally talked about. The head of that, that talus bone he was walking on, we had to take that out because it was kind of bathed in infection. Um, but we were still hoping to be able to pull that heel bone over um, using that TL hexapod system. But when we found that the blood work wasn't translating down the way that it needed to, we were worried that there was residual infection left in that bone. The best course of action at that point is to remove all of that infection and instead do it on a more acute basis. So you acutely corrected it, which means in one fell swoop as opposed to gradually and slowly. So explain to me what you're seeing in your pre-op x-rays and your initial post-op x-rays. So initially, um, in pre-op, you can see we have a weight-bearing x-ray where he's literally standing on the talus and his heel is to the side of his foot. The initial post-ops, because um, we were dealing with the infection, he was still in a pretty aggressive deformity. We were kind of holding him still, letting him cool off with infection. Um, and so stage one was cut out some of the bone. Stage two, we had to get the rest of the bone out. And so really the second surgery is where you see the most dramatic change where you can actually see us pull that heel underneath the leg. In this case, we were missing a bone now, that, that bottom half of the ankle bone. Um, and so we took the, the tibia, which is his shin bone, and we put it into the calcaneus and we call it a stick in a canoe, where you're kind of literally putting the leg into the, the V-shaped calcaneus. I would say that's probably what makes this the more complex uh, procedure 
because you're docking a bone on another bone that's wildly different in shape. Absolutely. The calcaneus is, uh, has a, a joint that's kind of more V-shaped to settle in the talus, whereas the tibia is more flat. And so in this case, you kind of have to finesse the shape of the two bones so that they can sit together and have a happy union. A lot of uh, modeling, if you may. Absolutely. Lots of finesse. <laughs> so the patient goes through that procedure and tell us the long term and how the patient goes over the next few months. So once we get his heel under his leg, we're kind of watching him fuse, we're kind of squeezing those bones together using the external fixation system. Um, and, and then we, over time, once we see that fusion, the frame comes off um, and we're able to put in um, the AHN nail up the leg to really stabilize those two bones together. Uh, so you're using the orthofix true lock to get the compression and then the nail as a double layer of protection so that when it heals, that you get a nice solid fusion. Absolutely. And, and the solid fusion is for what purpose? Well, ideally, he's gonna walk. We save the leg not just to have a leg on a body, but we want a functional leg that he can actually walk on. And so in this case, that worked out. We put the AHN nail in, we get him in a brace, and he's happy, he's walking. Because he has a, a, a stiff ankle, he can now propel forward instead of a floppy ankle and yeah. has no um, ability to propel in the propulsion phase of gait. Yeah, so we put him in a brace to help that, but we do with something called a flipper foot where we really kind of let the middle of the foot kind of flop and so that allows to kind of mimic that previous ankle motion. Yes, I've noticed that as well with these ankle fusions. They, they lose motion in the ankle, but there is motion still in the foot. Absolutely, it does literally flipper. Yeah, and, and they're happy. Very happy, yeah. And so what, what activities is this patient doing now? He's gone back to work. He owns a company as a chef, and uh, he and his wife have a dog. They're teaching to water jump off a ramp. Well, that, thank you so much for sharing. That was a great case. Absolutely, thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Fix.